this is a series of webinar that Professional Solidarity Forum has initiated for professionals. Uh, I would like to uh, start the webinar with a short introduction of uh, PSF in front of you. Uh, most of you certainly know what PSF is all about. Uh, Professional Solidarity Forum is a registered NGO. It's a group of professionals from IT and non-IT domains who is uh, who has been uh, formed this particular forum to to strive for the welfare of professionals, uh, for the well-being of professionals, to understand the issues that professionals are facing uh, all across, and uh, to overcome that. Uh, so, Professional Solidarity Forum uh, basically works under these five. A sphere of activities. So these are our major activities under which we focus. One is the uh, service to professionals fraternity. So our core focus of activities are our professionals. Those who, are, those who are working professionals, it could be from IT background or a non-IT background, or it could be any profession that matters. So we welcome all uh, the type of professionals to our forum. Uh, we, so we, we work towards the well-being of the professional's fraternity. The second area of activity or focus of PSF is uh, identifying the professional's talent and its promotion. So for example, we have various uh, professionals working for corporates, working in different industries. So we identify their talents. We also enhance, we, we try to enhance their, their talents by providing them platforms like, uh, like these, like, you know, uh, so having webinars uh, or having uh, set up with, uh, with different, you know, with different programs. Uh, our, our other activity is like our core, core social service. So utilizing the professionals uh, and the volunteers of this particular forum towards the upliftment of down, downtrodden and uh, towards understanding the, uh, the services to, to the society. We also uh, engage our volunteers and professionals towards the core social services. And uh, I can share one uh, live example that we are undergoing right now is the uh, ration and the food distribution drive all across the city of Hyderabad uh, with the need of the hour when uh, people have been locked down due to the COVID-19 situation. Uh, the other activity that a PSF focuses on is the job and career guidance for the job seekers or people those or even for the professionals who are looking for a job change. So we focus on them. We have various activities designed under the job and career guidance uh, sphere of activity. And we, we try to enhance the skill set of, uh, of an individual before he could appear for an interview. And last but not the least, uh, we are also focusing on startup consulting. We also uh, try to provide various uh, platforms to professionals who who wants to become an entrepreneur or who wants to take up their careers uh, career in in the next level as an entrepreneur. So this was the short introduction of PSF. Uh, without taking any further time, I would like to just introduce uh, our guest speaker today, and we will begin with the program. Uh, one request to participants is uh, please do not. Uh, touch your screen while uh, while the presentation is on. Uh, while you see the 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 lines that it, it basically allows the screen allows you to touch and uh, mark an act uh, mark something. But if you can avoid that, that will be really good. So our today's guest speaker is Dr. Hasibullah, uh, Dr. Muhammad Hasibullah. Uh, he is an educationalist, an international speaker, and an active social worker. Uh, he has, like, with over 40 years of experience in education and other industries, Dr. Hasibullah Sahab has worked for government of India as well as U.S. government. He has always been in forefront in community services and has mentored and inspired hundreds of people across the world. We at PSF are delighted to have uh, delighted to have him today for his uh, for this webinar. And we request Dr. Hasibullah Sahab to inspire us on the topic for today, that is rejuvenating yourself. Uh, so with all that, uh, I, would, I would like to hand over to Dr. Hasibullah Sahab to take over and 
uh, guide us on this topic. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. At the outset, I would like to thank the PSF. I have been following the activities for the past couple of years. They are doing a wonderful job. So I'd like to thank them for organizing this series of web seminars. Gentlemen, we are going through a difficult time. We all are talking about a pandemic. And a friend of mine called up and said, Dr. Saab, the Khyama is here. I told him, well, the Khyama is not here. But of course, there's just a small glimpse, like a trailer. You know, when a film is made on a very large scale, on a huge budget, the producers, the directors of the film release a couple of trailers showing this, this different aspect of the films, different characters, uh, how the momentum is built up in the film and so on. And then this, these are the couple of trailers. So this pandemic today we are facing the world over is just a small trailer in the things to come in future. But one thing is for sure, we all need to start looking at ourselves and the world at large. We have to look at the world and ourselves with a new lens. There are new normal and we need to adapt to the new normal. To give you an example, last night I was watching the CNN and there was a government health spokesperson talking to in a press meet. And one of the things the anchor asked when the, when the spokesperson said that we are making progress, I'm talking about the United States, we are making progress in containing this COVID-18. The anchor asked him, sir, what is the parameter to measure your progress? You know, what was the answer? It might sound very naive, but it is a fact. The answer was, when we can contain the death to 80 people per day, then we know that we are making progress. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine that acceptance that 80 people per day, when they contain it to 80 people per day, they're not saying eliminating deaths. You're talking about 80 people per day, then we know we are making progress. This is not normal but this is the new normal, and we have to start living with this. In this last decade, human race has taken great strides in all spheres of life. Yes, technological sphere, you talk about IT, you talk about industrialization, you talk about uh, uh, medical equipment, you talk about war equipment, everything, even in every phase of life, we have made large strides. But unfortunately, in this race, we tend to lose touch with ourselves. Yes, sir. We have lost touch. We forgot what it takes to be relevant in the society. It, we forgot what it takes to be relevant in contemporary and fast-paced world. And we have to, we are just going through the motions of living, but honestly, very few of us, I'm not talking all of you, but I'm telling you very few of us, including myself, we have, we have not understood the profound meaning of what is happening and expected of us by the best, because we are the best of creation. But look, I'm a very positive person and I'm not saying all is not lost, all, 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 is, all, is, not, all is lost. No, sir, we are humans. We are the best of creation. And we have, we are the only species on earth who have the ability to learn and unlearn, to acquire new knowledge, 
to interpret new knowledge, to reflect, to re reinvent, and to assess. That's the beauty of the human species, and that's what we need to do. Reinventing yourself is a very vast subject. Actually, it is. Uh, I conduct a workshop on this quite often here for the Saudi uh, Saudi Airlines and other people. And this subject is an interactive workshop, which takes almost a day or two days, where you have interaction, you have written exercises, and so on, and so forth, case studies. So it's a large scope, it's a large canvas of a workshop. But however, however, uh, what we could will do is in this particular brief 30, 40 minutes, we'll just touch upon the basis of reinventing yourself, just the basis, basics, and I'm sure it will, will take off. Primarily, because right now we are all involved in COVID-19, all of our lives have been impacted. We have been tracking the COVID-19 and it's, it looks quite weird that sometimes we are tracking not just the economic losses, but the human losses. It's like a 2020 match, it's weird, trust me. Apps have been brought in, you touch up the screen on the globe, just a small a country, and there's a count of a number of people who have been affected, number of deaths. It's like how many boundaries were scored, how many six six were scored, what's the current rate, run rate, and how many wickets have gone. It's like we are watching a 2020 match with, and then it keeps going. It's an it's, it's, it's a interactive uh, kind of a, a screen and it keeps telling you different countries, how many people have been affected, how many people have contracted, how many died, how many survived. Yes, sir, we are living in a very, very complex world. At the human level, okay, we are talking about deaths. I mean, what can be done for health? Wash your hands and you have, you have health experts all around talking about what best can be done. But at the human level, we realized how frail we are. A small microscopic virus, a very tiny microscopic virus, has held the entire world at ransom. 172 nations, no one is spared. All of us are held to ransom. What would happen as a result of this may start to value our lives much more holistically. We may realize the magic of simplicity and minimalizing. Maybe at the end of it, we may become more humble, more humane, and more less arrogant. Yes, that is what should be the takeaway for the human race. Be more humble, humility, be humane. A lot of us, if not we, or a lot of countries, a lot of leaders have lost a touch with humane things of our life. And the worst part, we have become arrogant. The world has become arrogant. We are the superpowers. First world nation, third world countries. Where does this all come from? So that arrogance, this small virus has brought in a new normal. We may have to look at the world with up to ourselves with a new lens all set up. We suddenly saw how our differences of religion, caste, creed, color, all pointless, just meaningless, because this virus did not discriminate. Immigrants, non-immigrants, people of this, this race, this caste, this creed, nothing, sir. This virus did not discriminate among anything. But very important aspect of this virus is this virus will leave behind a trail of political, economic, social, and the most important, psychological scars. We need to focus on some of them are going to 
some of the scars, the psychological scars, are going to go away soon, but a lot of them will linger for a very, very long time. Are we prepared? Are we prepared for this? Our preparedness of a new vision that will pull us out of this with a minimum collateral damage. Our psyche, the scars on our psyche are going to remain for a very long time to come. Maybe our lives will never be the same again. Our lifestyles have to change. Our value system would be examined and re-examined again and again. Each of us have become a victim in some way or the other, whether you are you're contracted, your relatives are contracted or not. It will affect us, all of us. As the psychological shocks will continue, we need to be there for each other with a new sense of empathy and care and emotions. We need to reinvent yourself. Panic attacks, depression, post-traumatic experiences will come and more and more. You will get more reports about this. It might not happen immediately, but trust me, this is the which is going to happen. And this is going to add not just to the health emergency, but also to the way we live life, we treat life, we look at life. It is not going to be easy. It's definitely not going to be easy. And as I said, this is going to impact. If I think that I'm in quarantine, I'm staying above everything and nothing is going to happen. Trust me, this would not be the case. This will impact every human being on earth, you, me, the whole world. We are no, never going to go back to the normal and the new normal has to be adapted. Well, uh, this is about the pandemic and there was a point to make that at the human level, what's at, in store for us. But even before this pandemic, we were living in a VUCA world, V-U-C-A, VUCA world. Basically, uh, this was a program introduced by the US Marine Corps. And then it got adapted in the world of business and management. And we used to conduct, we did conduct, we will conduct workshops on the VUCA world. VUCA, so we, we normally conduct this workshop for management saying that, you know, uh, what about the life uh, in, in the economic field? the uncertainty in the economic field, what's happening to the world around, oil prices, and you name it. But to be honest, it can be also applied to your own situation in the past decade as an individual. It's not necessary for corporates. We in that VUCA is volatile. Volatile. In the last decade, if you look at the world closely, you'll find there's a lot of volatile situations. ISIS wars, you name it, wars all around. There is a, a, a program going on in the world against a certain community or against a certain religion. So what's happening is we are living in a volatile age and sufferings, terrorism, and what have you. I mean, you, it's just there. And this has led to uncertainty. The V, U, U is for uncertain. No one can predict the outcomes of what's happening around. No one can produce a prospect, the predict the outcomes which may, which the human race will be affected or impacted. We are totally heading towards uncertainty. We are in a phase of trial and error. And remember, we don't have one solution fits them all we need to start looking into the uncertainties of life. We, you, and the C in VUCA is complex. Yeah, we are living in a very complex world. And the past, past decade has added, aggravated the complexity of in this world. 
first world, third world, hunger, discriminations. It has been. Immigration, ships, boats are standing there, and no, you cannot be admitted because you're of a certain race or certain religion. You know, it's a very complex situation, very complex. And finally, the A in the VUCA, you know, volatile, uncertain, complex, and the A is for ambiguous. No clear interpretation of what is right and what is wrong. Very ambiguous situation. Mixed reactions and lopsided solutions, lopsided decisions. Decisions by political leaders, decisions by economic leaders, decisions by our own community leaders, quite ambiguous. In our community, when I'm talking about our community, I'm talking about the Muslim world, we have a whole range of muftis, differences in religion, sects, our mosques are divided, quite ambiguous. Should we celebrate a certain festival? Should we not? So we are going through a time which has shown more division in our community than ever, ever before. The need of the R is to sit back, assess, and reinvent. You see, whenever we talk about reinventing, it's, it's not just as uh, uh, out of the blue kind of a concept. We keep reinventing. Actually, we do. We do all the time. We may not make an effort to consciously do it, but trust me, we keep adjusting, we keep, keep adapting we to changes in our lives. We do. And that's what reinventing is all about. Reinventing is nothing but finding within ourselves the time and resources to create a new you, not entirely, but at least a part of it, to meet the situations, to meet certain calamities, to meet, to get a direction in life. And the first aspect of reinventing is to adapt to change. Now I know. This has become a cliche, change. Everyone, whether it is a personality development workshop, whether it is a management workshop, anywhere, it, the, the word change is, uh, has now become a cliche and it is uh, flashed on that, yeah, we need to change. We need to adapt to change. But believe me, when I'm saying this adapting to change, it's not, not something new. Why is being, it is being repeated in all seminars, in all presentations? There's a simple reason. You all are aware of uh, the famous couplet by Allama Iqbal. This was in 1930 when he said, This was 1930. But the concept of change has been, has been given to us 1,500 years ago in the Holy Quran itself. In Surah Raad, chapter 13, verse 11, Allah Tawarukullah says, Allah will not change the good condition of a people as long as they do not change themselves. So this is what Allah himself is saying 1,500 years ago. So then it means that change is not a static. Change is a dynamic concept. You keep changing and you need to keep change and you need to adapt to change. Change is not, now when you say about change, you say, oh yeah, no problem. I can, I'm, adapt, I'm adaptable to change, I will adapt. But trust me, change is not just wishful thinking. Though even though it has become a cliche, but the world is dynamic, not static. Time is not irreversible. What I'm talking to you now, with the next second, it becomes a thing of, thing of past. So it is an irreversible, time is irreversible, and we need to manage and use our time to the best possible way 
and the first thing for that is to change. If we miss the bus of change now, we may be left behind forever. Before we go into the aspect of what needs to be changed, there's a very vital element. There's a very vital element, which normally is not used in uh, management talks. And that is, there's a vital element if a change is introspection. Introspection. Look within yourself. When was the last time you spoke to yourself? When was the last time you talked to yourself? So very important is look inwards. It might be that the change you want to make would primarily require a small internal change in your psyche, in the way you approach life, in the relationship you have all around you. That's a time that there might be a reason why you should look within yourself. Trust me, no matter how strong the external forces may be, that will not make you adhere to the compulsions of change. The forces might be big, but the vital element for change is that change should come from within. And to do that, the internal change, you need to do a bit of introspection. You know, interestingly, it just reminded me that all of us, I had read, all of us have a three stage of conscious cells. Each of us, every human being, which is called as conscious, subconscious, and unconscious. If you look at it in Urdu, it says shaur, nifs shaur, la shaur. Aksar hum baat karte hai, la shauri mein ye ho gaya. So it means that the, we, we do acknowledge the existence of a subconscious and unconscious self. Yes, they did. And so it's not a question of just acknowledgement, but it is there. Trust me, it is there in all of us. Uh, I think I will be oversimplifying it, but let me give you an example. Uh, when we are young, uh, we are talking about those times when the whole India was very dirty. Now it is such Bharat and everything is neat and clean, uh, so-called. <coughs> so uh, this was when we are young and we were going for an intercollegiate debate competition to Lucknow. And I was sitting at the railway station along with another friend. And right in front of me, of us, there was a man walking. And this person, as we walked, there was, as I said, we were not Swaj Bharat, so there was a, a banana skin of uh, one. Someone has peeled the banana, ate the banana, threw the skin onto the platform. So this gentleman was walking. He kept his foot on that banana peel, and he fell. We abruptly start laughing because it's, it presented to us a very comic situation, a Charlie Chaplin type of situation. So we, besakta, abruptly we, we, we laughed or we smiled at, at, a, at the situation that the person is going and he slips and he falls. So that is a conscious reaction to a situation in front of me. That was a conscious reaction. Anyway, some of the people and we ourselves, we went and tried to help him up to get up. And we found that he could not get up. His hip bone had cracked or at least fractured or whatever. He couldn't just get up. So anyway, we got some people around and he was taken to the hospital. And that is it. I, when we sat in the train, the train came. We sat in the train. I was looking out of the window. And I started wondering. That was the right thing I did. This is my subconscious self telling me. Was the right thing we did at laughing at someone's misery? Someone is hurt. Someone is fallen down. He has hurt himself and we laughed. So my subconscious self started making me feel guilty that this was the right thing to do. And I started wondering as to, you know, uh, it was a comic situation, so it is natural. I'm not saying that I did a wrong thing, but I'm saying that uh, it went into my subconscious, 
hey, what is the right thing to do? I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have laughed at it. Anyway, we reached our destination. We were checked in. And then late in the night, it, this keep kept bothering me. This entire thing kept bothering me. And then somewhere within my unconscious self, a thought came to me that, are we so frail? Are we so weak? We are supposed to be the best of creation. And here we are, a simple, a, a useless, of no use, a banana peel, a banana skin. When you put your foot on it, you could stand firm, you fell. So what are we? What exactly is our existence? We are a very, very insignificant part of this world, and we think that we are very important. So this lesson which you taught me is to keep looking into within yourself. I'm not saying, let, let me tell you, that by saying conscious, subconscious, unconscious, I'm not telling you to become a hermit. I'm not telling you to become a dervish. I'm not telling you to become a philosopher. And every situation you come across, you start looking into yourself for conscious and subconscious and unconscious self. No way. I'm not saying that. I am a very positive person. And I, what I'm saying is, these self consciousness, consciousness cells do exist in all of us. All it needs is take the time out sometime, once in a while, to look within your inner self. What am I? What am I doing? What am I, if what I'm doing is right, how does it impact the lives of others, the people around me? I might not be as cordial with my relations. Should I improve that cordial relationship? And so on and so forth. I might not be very uh, uh, contributing to my family, my society. What, is, what does my subconscious and conscious self say? What is my role? So, inner self, talking to yourself, looking into introspection as to what we are, as I just mentioned, that we as a community, whether it be Muslims or anyone else, we have to start looking at ourselves in an absolutely new manner. We have to assess as to where we are going from here. So change. So as I said, the first step of change is changing the inner self. So it involves the change. It involves an individual to seek a purpose, a direction a goal which will impact not just himself, but the people around him, the society at large. So what we need to do as individual is to seek a purpose. I'm sure we all do. Seek a desire and a goal. You know, we normally talk about goal and goal settings and so on and so forth. But believe me, it's nothing to do with management. It has nothing to do just with the management. It's to do with all of us. And this is a very old age concept of set your goals, short term, long term, and so on. Here when I'm talking about uh, uh, the purpose, a desire to change is the most important. And to do that, you need to set a goal or objective. Uh, most, to do that, you need to question yourself why. What exactly am I going to do? And this is a part of what, how you reinvent. So what you do is you set an objective. And the objective might need not be a grandized plan, a huge plan. No, we are talking about small things. Small things. You know, we normally do. At least uh, we used to do when we were young, uh, maybe 30, 40 years back. Whenever there was a new year, 31st December, I don't know how many of you uh, follow it still, but 31st December, a lot of us used to make some resolutions. From 1st January, the coming new year, I will I'll take the following resolutions. Probably, I'll lose five kilos of weight in the next five years. I'll go regularly to the gym. I might uh, be more affectionate towards my siblings, and so on and so forth. There could be so many resolutions we make on 31st December and on New Year night. I don't know how many of us follow through. As far as I am concerned, within 48 hours, 
all my resolutions would go out of the window. Not that I do it deliberately, but it would become a fact. So we are not talking about those kind of resolutions, which were made, which which are made on the spur of the moment. No, I'm talking about looking into yourself, looking at the needs which you have all around you, making an assessment of what you are, and then setting up the objectives. Once you set the objectives, and it will be clear, clear objectives, and each individual might have different objectives. I'm not, I'm not here to dictate to you that make this as your objective. No, sir. Each one of us have their own needs. They know what they are. And that's the reason why I'm saying each one of us should do a little bit of introspection to know our strengths, our weaknesses, the opportunities which will be, which will, we can come to us, and the threats for those objectives we normally call it sort analysis. So set an objective. And once you set an objective, that's not enough. You need to make a plan. How to execute the objective you have, you have set for yourself. And the plan should be actionable. Not just making a plan, oh, okay, I will do this. No, sir. This needs to be a plan. That's why I said that reinventing yourself is a complete workshop. What we do is we... Uh, interact and and uh, is a, it's an interactive session. We give them certain exercises to do and so on. So the so second thing is how. Once is why that is an objective. There's how, which is you make a plan, an action plan. And once you do that, the plan is in place. You don't have to write it. You have, you can just think about it. The objective is clear. The plan is made. Then. It is you have to make an earnest effort to allocate time and resources. Yes, sir. Time and resources to execute what you have planned, to execute what you have thought you will be able to do. And for that, you need to be very objective in what you're doing. The plans which you make should be actionable. You know, all of us are reactive and that is human nature it is we are all reactive but not just human nature all species on this earth are reactive you act you react to action action and reaction are equal but uh, more important would be if you have a clear objective if you have your plan very clear in your mind and very defined then you will become proactive it's not the time but uh, many of you, I'm sure all of you, uh, have at some point of the time read and gone through Stephen Coe's Seven Habits of Effective People. If you have not, I would advise you to go through it. It is a very old book, but the, what is mentioned in the book, what is written in the book, is quite relevant. It goes from, again, setting of objectives, priorities, setting of priorities, communication, what have you. So Seven Habits of Effective People is a very good book to read or PowerPoints to follow or lectures to listen. So to first step of re, to reinvent is, as I said, change, adapt to change, introspect, internal changes. Then you set an objective for yourself, depending on your situation, lay out a plan, and then the plan should be, of course, actionable, and then allocate time and resources predetermined time and resources and carry out your objective in a very sincere and honest fashion. Once that is done, from time to time, that's the, there's a problem which we, we, we never do. We set our objectives and we think that we are doing things, but we never revisit our plans and reassess what we are doing. That is very important. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, there are certain hurdles in this plan and action. That is, many of us, me included, I'm not separating myself, are uh, procrastinate. Procrastinate. We fail, we, 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 we think that, okay, we will do it. And we try to absolve ourselves of the responsibility to follow the plan we have made. So we procrastinate. 
what is important is we start we have to start learning to prioritize remember the key is schedule your priorities don't prioritize your schedule i repeat schedule your priorities don't prioritize your schedule and that is the key the mantra of really having to how to manage your time so that you could work on the actions which you have designed for yourself the objectives you have set for yourself no one has set an objective for you it is you who have set an objective for yourself and that will help you if you prioritize what you have, what you need to do there's another setback which is delusion some of us are delusional i'm again accepting myself i'm working on it you're not ready to accept that i am neglecting it you say i'm working on it no sir just working on it is is not the solution you need to make a effort a real effort to uh, try to get get reach the goals which you have set for yourself you know one of the things i'm not saying this should be objective but one of the things which uh, can be objective since we are now in quarantine since we are now at home since you are now with your near and dear ones since at this point of time you are concerned about your relatives about your friends one of the objective i'm not saying it should be but one of the objectives could be uh emotional uh, we normally do a workshop on emotional intelligence very interesting sometimes inshallah in due course if possible we'll keep a small uh, presentation on emotional intelligence with uh, psf and all involved so emotions uh, the what the objective could be of an emotional atm card now i'll tell you a small anecdote which happened to me last year i was in united states of america and i needed some money so i went to an atm small uh, coins a small uh, place a small shop uh, and cubicle and there was a gentleman uh, an american citizen i think uh, who was there at the machine so i was waiting for my turn interestingly this machine was a audio visual aided machine in other words it tells you what's going on so this gentleman put his atm card in the machine to withdraw some money and the voice was loud and clear from the audio from the atm machine sorry you do not have enough funds and then in the small cubicle i could hear the sound it would keep saying he kept changing a uh, type for different lower uh, uh, amounts but the machine kept responding the same way that sorry you do not have enough balance well as a typical american he seemed to be upset he kicked the machine used the choice invectives and left i went i i took put my atm card and got the small amount of money which i wanted and i walked off but then again as i said a subconscious thought process went on into my mind because i know as i said i keep talking to myself uh quite a few times when i have the time uh, i just try to be, look it in and it set a chain of thoughts to me uh the thought was the relationships with people or near and dear ones it's like an atm machine unless we make enough deposits of love affection care we cannot expect to be to use our card and withdraw the same you see all of us all of us irrespective have a legitimate emotional atm card father mother wife daughter son friends brother you name it relatives we all have a and they all have this they have a card which is quite legitimate valid and useful provided we have some sufficient emotional deposits in our accounts unfortunately we have the card but there's insufficient balance we need to work 
on building our emotional relationships. We need to work on building our relationships with our friends, with the community. We need on depositing enough love balance with people around us before using our own ATM card. That, my friends, could be a primary goal is this time of calamity. That is, build up your emotional deposits, build up your relationship, the, the relationships. Use, see that your ATM, the emotional ATM card is strong enough to draw parallel with your relatives, with your friends, with your children, with your siblings. So that could be, that could one of the objects. I'm not saying this should be the object. I'm saying that could be one of the objectives in reinventing yourself. So this is as far as uh, uh, my uh, presentation is concerned. I'm sure that this is not enough that as I said, uh, we have the paucity of time and I would definitely like uh, to give it on to the host of this program to uh, open it for some questions. As I said, I'm not a scholar. Uh, I'm not an answer to everything. If there are certain questions which I may be able to answer, I will do it. If I can't, then of course I will research through. Maulana Google is already there. So I'll research through and come back to you some other time. Or you can uh, WhatsApp to me your questions or email to me, and I, I will definitely do a research and come back. But I can, at this point of time, answer uh, certain questions. But as a recap, let me tell you what I wanted to say is first and foremost thing in reinventing is to start adapting to change. I'm not saying adopting to change. I'm saying adapting to change. A change which is a dynamic concept. And then I spoke about the change is not limited to external forces. The most important change is within ourselves. And to do that, you need to introspect introspection with looking within self is very important as i said we have a conscious subconscious and conscious self sometimes take out the time to talk to yourself and you will start looking at uh, uh, with the with like with the absolutely new perspective the third thing which you said is uh, to have this change effect what the elements are first and foremost is you start setting objectives small it might sometimes, but it's so uh, uh, of no value. But trust me, even, even a small insignificant objective, if followed through with sincerity and honesty, can become a landmark in your life. So set an objective, put a plan in motion, put a plan in action, for uh, actionable plan, clear, thoughtful, no grand ideas, but just a clear, thoughtful plan, and then follow through, that is, be proactive to carry out that plan. And then, of course, reassess, revisit those plans, and see what, where you stand vis-a-vis -vis the objective you have set for yourselves. And as I said, there are certain pitfalls of procrastination, of uh, uh, being telling yourself that you're trying to do it, but you're never doing it. So there are certain pitfalls which you need to avoid, delusions. I am on my way or I'm getting there. So avoid delusions and be sincere in what you do. And uh, finally, as I said, this is a good time to experiment with your own emotions, to try and see what best can be done for the people. You know, what is emotional intelligence? Honestly, the, your capability, the capability of a person to assess his own, his own emotions and the emotions of people around you, that has become very important. We have become an intolerant community. We, are, we, are, we have been, we, we became less humane. We have become the humbleness and arrogance should gradually, the arrogance should go and humbleness should come more and more within us. I thank you all for joining this session. I hope it has been to 
some use uh, for all of you. Thank you. And Jazakallah Khair once again for PSF for organizing this webinar. Over to you, the host. Jazakallah Khair. So uh, the forum is open for question and answer ses session for next 10 minutes. In case we have any questions, uh, they can either type here or uh, they can just unmute and start speaking. Please allow me a minute while I allow the participants to unmute their mic. Just one minute. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, let's take one question at a time. So I see uh, someone wants to ask Sayyida Mahvish, is it? Uh, hello, assalamu alaikum. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I'm sorry, your audio is, 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 is breaking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think there is another device uh, through which you are logged in, so it's echoing. Ah. No, it's, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little better, better. This subconscious mind, how to make a powerful use and uh, how to ask ourselves that our, we have a subconscious mind and how to power it. It's very simple. A lot of people call it meditation. A lot of people call it uh, uh, so many things. But honestly, I feel you don't need any meditation. You don't need anything. All you need to do is uh, once, now that I've told you, all of us have that subconscious self. It's all within us. And this is not the first time that you'll be talking to yourself or you're looking at your inner self. As a matter of fact, you've already done it quite fast. I'm not saying this is a compartment. There's a, a tight compartmental separation. What I'm saying is you have, you have already you have known your subconscious self. You have talked to yourself. All you need to do is be a little bit more focused. We all live on the periphery. We are living on a periphery. We are reacting to situations. We are doing things because something is happening, so we are reacting to it. So let's take a step back and think. And it's simple. Think about your situation. That's all it is needed. You don't have to make a, a, a concerted effort to go into yourself and look at it. No, it's, it's very simple. It's just that, as I said, when I saw that situation on the railway station, or when I saw this man, uh, uh, that the ATM card, when he put in and there's not enough sufficient uh, balance, I just spoke, talked to myself, thought about it. Well. And then it, it went on. So it was there within you. It will be there within you. It's always there. You don't have to make an effort. There's no exercise per se uh, to do, to read your subconscious self. It, it comes to you automatically, provided you just are not reactive. You just don't react to a situation. And that's the reason why you keep, you need to change. You need to start looking at it more closely. I hope I answered your question. You, Jazakallah. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sivana, sir, there's a question uh, from a participant. They are asking mm -hmm. uh, procrastination of our plans or objectives. Absolutely, it's one of the biggest problems everyone goes through. Could you please give some tips on how to overcome procrastination? To overcome procrastination. I have been trying to tell my son, Babar, uh, about procrastination quite often. Well, honestly, to overcome procrastination, you need, as I said again, to be proactive. What you need to be is prioritizing. If you prioritize, and I told you earlier, you need time management. And as I said, if you read uh, Stephen Coy and anyone else who would say time, they divide the time into four different parts uh, uh, and the four different blocks. Uh, the blocks A, B, C, D, and it says that. Uh, doing things which are urgent and important, doing things which are important but not urgent and so on and so forth, go through it. 
So normally what we are doing is, what we do is we try to do things which are urgent. We, if you ask someone that what is, what is to be done in the four blocks, so do things which are urgent and important. I would say what would be uh, the best way to do things would be to allocate time for important things which are not urgent. Get my point. If we keep, keep shifting our focus, then a time would come, then things would become very important and very urgent. And that's a slot which you know don't want to be in the time management. So prioritizing your work and working towards understanding that what are important to me, which may not be urgent, but very important is what that slot you had to be. And that way, to a certain extent, your procrastination can go. As I said, procrastination is a laid back attitude. Okay, it can be done. And also, I meant, told about delusion. You are in the delusional mode. Oh, I'm, I'm working at it, but you're not. So that's the reason why if you become more proactive, if you start putting a timeline as to what you need to do and adhering to it, well, inshallah, we can be, we'll be able to overcome your procrastination. I hope uh, it answers a certain extent. Thank you, Dr. Asib. Another quick question from Muhammad Amjad is, uh, what should be done when your past mistakes become hurdle to set up your future objectives and when you're trying to implement it. When you have your old past faults, if you have your own recovery, what should we do in this scenario? Interesting. Because this is a very good question. And the person who is, we are the best of creation. But if this is also the best of creation, but if this is also the best of creation, we are the best of creation. Nothing wrong in it. We all make mistakes. And there's nothing wrong in it. Jo galti karne ke baad, uska ehsaas ho, aur uska kafara da kiya jaye, wo important hai. Wo important hai. Aap guilt mein mat jaiye. Agar aap se koi galti ho gai hai, if you have made a mistake, do not feel the guilt. आप गिल्ट में जाकर अपने आप के ऊपर अफसोस कर ले रहे हैं आप को अपने आप को आप बेचारा बना रहे हैं दैट इज अ रॉन्ग एटीट्यूड बात का एहसास है कि आपने गलती की ट्रस्ट मी यू हैव वन सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द बैटरी पचहत्तर फीसद ये बात अगर किसी को एहसास हो जाता है गलती अगर वो गलती कर रहा है और उसे एहसास नहीं है दैट इज अ प्रॉब्लमेटिक सिचुएशन मगर आप को एहसास हो रहा है बहुत बड़ी बात है सो अगर कोई गलती का एहसास हो जाए आपको और उस गलती को पास मिस्टेक्स तो आपके ऑब्जेक्टिव्स में ये भी हो सकता है या ट्राइंग टू पुट सेट राइट द मिस्टेक्स व्हिच हैव डन इट कैन नॉट बी डन ओवरनाइट अज्यूम करिए मैं थोड़ी सी मिसाल के लिए कि आपके किसी एक कजन से या एक रिश्तेदार से एक जमाने से आप उससे अनबन है और बात नहीं हो रही है और आपको फील होता है कि आपने ये ज्यादती की कि उनको अलग कर दिया या बात नहीं किया या उनसे एक वो कर दुश्मनी समझे या गैर वो रिलेशनशिप का वो रखा है कि भी नहीं मैं I have been a bit arrogant about this I should have been much better अगर आपको ये एहसास हो रहा है कि yes I have committed a mistake in not not doing this so I'm not saying that you can make an objective that I'm going to go to the morning with Khalane Khala or with Khalane Khalere Bhai or with a friend or with a friend or I'll go and start embracing him. No, I'm not saying that. What you need to do is you have to feel that you have made a mistake in some of your relationships in the past. Alhamdulillah, you realized it. You have made an objective that over a period of time I'll try to cultivate relationships. I'll try to be positive towards my kith and kin, my siblings, my, the, my friends. I'm just giving an example of a ghalti. So, uh, and then you start working towards it. You meet, make, meet, meet them in some functions. You smile at them. 
uh, go and walk up to them and shake their hands and you gradually take uh, uh, this forward. So, galti karna, koi buri baat nahi hai, galti hoti hai, insaan galti karta hai, par putla bana hai, Allah se bana hai, gaya putla hai, lekin us galti ka ehsaas ho jana, aur uske taraf, usko us galti ko sudarne ki koshish karna, ye aap ke objectives mein aa sakta hai, aur ye ti mushkil ka, mushkil baat nahi hai. Hope I answered your question. We have received a lot of questions coming in, so we'll have, we'll quickly go through it. Omar, Abedin, has asked a very interesting question. He asked, how to start in a conversation? Yeah, I, I just uh, said earlier, to start in a conversation, you just have to relax. Think about, for example, if something happened today, which is unhoni ho gayi hai kuch. Something which was uh, not the normal, something which, ha- which uh, is something out of the ordinary. So, and I again told you, don't become a dervish, don't become a philosopher. Just think about it. Uh, an episode, an anecdote which happened. Should this have happened? Uh, who's responsible for this? Was it me who was responsible? Or was the other people who were responsible? So some kind of introspection is very necessary. And to do that, you just have to think about it. As I said, you don't have to become a sadhu or, or, or a, a big murshid to do that. You just have to think about your own self, within yourself. Pause. Look within you. That is, talk to yourself, within your mind, as to question. The important thing is, question the situation you have been on, go, go, through. Start questioning things. I'm not saying question everything you see around you, but question certain things which you feel personally were unusual, and the answers will come to you. It takes a bit of time, but gradually you start becoming more conscious of your subconscious self. That that happens. So all it needs a little bit of sensitivity and sensibility. You have to be more sensitive to situations. We have now, unfortunately, our community, our, our, our Society has become very insensitive. Padoos mein kuch ho raha hai. Padoos mein ek miyaa bhi ke jhagde ho raha hai. Maar peet ho raha hai. Aap kawaaz ha raha hai. You're insensitive. Aap ne kabhi socha nahi ke bhi chalo mein chal kar pooch loo. Aap ko to hukum hai. Ke agar aap masjid mein hai. Namaz ko ja raha hai. Or daily ja raha hai. Or ek shaks aap dekhte hai ke do tien din se wo namaz mein nahi aya. To aap ko hukum hai ke aap uske ghar jaayen. Or khatka maare ke bhai kya baat hai. Aap to regular musalli hai aur aap nahi aai. So you see, if you're conscious about the people around you, if you're conscious of what's happening with you, aur aap uske baare mein thoda sa gaur o fikr karein, to aap ko khud jawaab nikal jayenge, you'll be able to start reading into your subconscious self. And we do. Actually, hum ko aata hai, lekin kya hota hai? Hum it conscious world mein itne mutla ho jate hai, even though aapka subconscious bolta rata hai, hum sunte nahi uski subconscious ki awaaz aap consciousness mein apne daba dete hain apne nif shaur ko la shaur ko aap shauri taur par daba dete hain and that needs to change uske liye thoda sa kuch nahi bas ye hai ke aap you become more sensitive hope i answered the question dr rasib uh, our next question is by roman sajid he said that in the beginning of your program you spoke about how the current scenarios are just like a trailer aur abhi picture baaki hai so his concern is ke now moving forward, should we now never feel, should we feel that yeah, life is normal and we should take a step and take a step and like how do we go ahead, go back to our life subconsciously? So his question is that how things are going to be in future and how we should approach it? Interesting and I'm sure all of us are looking at it, all of us are working on it. As I told you, there will be a few new normals, new normals. As I gave you the example of CNN uh, spokesperson who said that Asi log jab marne lag jayenge, hum rok denge Asi log par, to ye progress hoga. Yane log mar jayenge Asi log per day in United States. Isko wo log normal samjha ja raha hai. Or I'm not saying that they have been arrogant or they have been uh, uh, bad at it. No, but this is an honest fact. तो अब आने वाले दिनों में जो होने वाला है हमको दुनिया को एक नई नए नजरिए से देखना पड़ेगा 
एक नए लेंस को लाना पड़ेगा और उस लेंस के जरिए देखना पड़ेगा अब ये नहीं कि आपकी भाईचारी खत्म हो जाएगी आप लोग से मेल मिलाप खत्म कर जाएंगे नहीं इनशाला ह्यूमन रेस हम कई बड़ी बड़ी कलामिटीज के थ्रू चल जा चुके हैं वी हैव गॉन थ्रू लॉर्ड ऑफ कलामिटीज इन आर लाइफ whether it be world war 2 or whether it is the uh, 711 or 911 or whatever bahut sari cheeze hui iraq ko tabah kar diya gaya duniya bhar mein wo aaye hain to ye aisa nahi hai aisi wabaaye pehli bhi phail chuki hain plague ho chuka hai isse qabl hazaron lakhon ki tadad mein purane zamane mein pehle plague mein log pidit hue mar gaye hain the world will go on but totally new normal totally new normal ab dekhiye hamari zindagiyon mein aapke tv ke live shows aapko purane tv serials nikal ke bataye ja rahe hain why because you cannot make new serials aapko tv audience nahi milne wali things will it will take time for things to come normal inshallah and they will but definitely you, there will be a new way to look at things मेल मिलाप खत्म हो जाएगा या लोगों से मिलना खत्म हो जाएगा ऐसा नहीं है वक्त बदलेगा इनशाला एवरीथिंग विच गोस अपज टू कम डाउन ये तो नॉर्मल नेचर का वो है बट ये है कि यस वी विल इट विल टेक एन एज अट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग विच इज गोइंग टू हैपन ये तो इकोनॉमिक पॉलिटिकल अपीवल्स होंगे इकोनॉमी खराब हो जाएगी बेरोजगारी बढ़ जाएगी एवरी वन टॉकिंग अबाउट इट the most important part which will happen is there will be a psychological scars zehno dilo dimag par dimag par psychological scars rehne wale hain trauma bahut din tak rehne wala hai and we need to overcome it objectively thande dimag se uske bare mein socha jaye ye zaruri nahi hai ki ye mental scars sirf un logon pe aayenge jiske ghar ka koi qareebi rishtedar असर हो जाए उसको कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करा है डिजीज या मर गया है उन्हीं को नहीं हम सब उसकी चपेट में आने वाले हैं बिकॉज लाइफ विल नेवर बी द सेम लाइफ विल नेवर सेम एंड यस बट इनशाला दर इज नथिंग नेगेटिव अबाउट लाइफ लुक एट इट इन अ पॉजिटिव मैनर इनशाला तौर अल्लाह की मदद ली जाएगी हम अपने एफर्ट्स करेंगे टू ब्रिंग अ बैक लाइफ टू द नॉर्मल बट यू हैव टू एक्सेप्ट the new normal in life hope that answers mr roman's question uh, last that was roman sajid's question uh, we have last right. questions for you i will quickly take you through it uh, we have a question from i can't hear you yeah i have a question from noor hidayat uh, right the person ask is yeah. activities or plan underway taken by hasibullah sir in uh, for in this regard to community level especially during these days in india where there is a lot of negative projection of muslims in the society taken by me yes i didn't get the question like, uh, i didn't get the question any community level work which you are involved in or part of which will be helping uh, uh, the community since there is a lot of negative projections of uh, muslims yes uh, well i am stuck here in jeddah but i have been uh, coordinating with uh, khake taiba trust and other organizations uh to do some community service like psf is also doing this at uh i was speaking to one of the person uh, jibran and i told him that don't restrict your distribution of uh, rations or whatever to only muslim dominated areas go into those areas where there are people poor irrespective of what religion they are go to ambedkar nagar go to shelka shell tribe colonies and try to project that we as muslim community we believe that allah tbaru taala send prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as rahmatul alamin he didn't send him as a rahmatul muslimin he sent him as a rahmatul alamin a small thing which uh, uh, i would tell and i keep telling the community here and i did interact on web with some of the community organization in delhi uh, and other places and i told them and this is the conclusion and very interesting i was listening to a youngster a pakistani youngster who was giving a speech aur wo keh raha tha 
کہ پرندے اب کیوں نہیں آتے کنکر کیوں کنکر کیوں نہیں برساتے یہ علم طرح کا فال عرب کا بھی صحابی فیل کی طرف توجہ تھی اس کی وہ کہہ رہا تھا کہ پرندے اب کیوں نہیں آتے اور کنکر کیوں نہیں برساتے اور پھر اس کے بعد اس نے اس کا جواب بھی دیا کہ بھائی ہو رہا یہ ہے کہ پاکستان میں خاص طور پہ یہ پاکستان کا بچہ تھا کہ جو وہاں پر چلتا ہے ایک شخص بندوق اٹھاتا ہے وہ مسلمان ہے اور جب ٹریگر کھینچتا ہے تو اللہ اکبر بولتا ہے بھلے وہ پاکستان میں ہو یا سیریا میں ہو جو شخص بندوق چلا رہا ہے وہ مسلمان ہے جس کو گولی لگ رہی ہے وہ بھی مسلمان ہے تو پرندے اب کیوں نہیں آتے کنکر کیوں نہیں برساتے یا ابراہ نہیں ہے اور ایمان والے نہیں ہیں تو اس بات سے خیر وہ تو مجھے ایک خیال آیا مجھے اپنے آپ کو خیال آیا جو یہ سوال کرے ہیں کہ فرشتے اب کیوں نہیں آتے منو سلوات اب کیوں نہیں لاتے منو سلوات کھانا آپ یاد ہوگا کہ موسا علیہ السلام بن اسرائیل کو لے کر جب جا رہے تھے اور اور فرون کی فوج سے تو موسا کے لوگ بن اسرائیل کے لوگ کہا یا موسا اپنے خدا کو بولو کہ ہم کو کھانا دے ہمارے پاس کھانا نہیں ہم بھوکے ہیں تو موسا علیہ السلام اللہ تبارک تعالیٰ سے دعا کرتے تھے اور فرشتے منو سلوات کھانا لے کر ڈش ٹریز لے کر اترتے تھے اور وہ ایسا ہوتا تھا تو میرا سوال ہے تھا کہ جب یہ بچے کی بات سنا میں تو میرا سوال تھا کہ فرشتے اب کیوں نہیں آتے ہزاروں لاکھوں کی تعداد میں لوگ بھوکے ہیں صرف مسلمان ہی نہیں بہت لوگ بھوکے ہیں سومالیا میں ہندوستان میں تھرڈ ورلڈ کنٹریز میں ہر جگہ لوگ بھوکے پیاسے ہیں تو پھر فرشتے آج کیوں آ کے منو سلوات دیتے ہیں اس کے جواب میں میرے ذہن اگین جو صاحب سب کانشیس کی بات کریں میں اپنے آپ سے سوال کرنے لگ گیا اپنے ذہن میں تو مجھے ایک جواب یوں آیا کہ حضرت آدم علیہ السلام سے لے کے حضرت محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم تک جتنے بھی پیغمبر آئے ہیں عیسیٰ علیہ السلام موسا علیہ السلام داؤد علیہ السلام یہ اس پورے پیریڈ میں اسلام واز این ایوالونگ ریلیجن اسلام ایوالو ہو رہا تھا اور ایوالو جب ہوتا ہے تو اس میں ایکسٹرنل فیکٹرز بھی آئے جاتے ہیں فرشتے بھی آئیں گے اور پرندے چونچ میں اپنے وہ لے کر ابراہ کی فوج پہ بھی ڈالیں گے عیسیٰ علیہ السلام کو وہ طاقت دی جائے گی اللہ کی طرف سے کہ وہ اندھوں کو آگ دے دے تو یہ تمام اللہ دے گی ابراہیم علیہ السلام کو کہ آگ سے گزر جائے وہ باغ بن جائے تو دس از بیکاز اسلام واز ایوالونگ اور یہ ایوالو پیریڈ میں موسیٰ علیہ السلام کی دعا سے کھانا بھی آ رہا ہے جب وقت آیا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا ربی کریم کا آخری نبی کا تب آپ کو یاد ہوگا کہ حضور اکبر صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا آخری بیان جو میدان عرفات پہ دیا گیا اس میں آپ نے لوگوں سے پوچھا اے لوگوں کیا میں نے تم کو وہ تمام باتیں جو اللہ نے کہا تھا مکمل اسلام تم تک پہنچا دیا تو لوگوں نے سال کہا لبے کیا رسول اللہ آپ نے کیا تو آپ حضور اکبر صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اللہ کو گواہ رکھے کہ اللہ میں نے تیرا پورا پیغام لوگوں تک پہنچا دیا مطلب یہ کہ حضور اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اسلام مکمل ہوا اب ایولوشن نہیں ہوا اب یہ مکمل ہو گیا اب اس مکمل دین میں ایک بہت امپورٹنٹ چیز جو کہی گئی وہ آخر مسلط و آت الزکا تو زکات کا ذکر ہر نماز کے ساتھ لگائے مطلب یہ کہ اب ہم بن گئے ہیں وہ جو فرشتوں کی جگہ جو کھانا پہنچاتے ہم بن گئے ہیں ریپرزینٹیٹو تو جب آپ ایک دس روپے نکال کے اپنی مسجد سے نکلتے وقت اس کسی فقیر کو دیتے ہیں یہ ذہن میں رکھ لیجئے کہ رزق اللہ تو اللہ ہے آپ نہیں ہیں آپ ایک صرف ذریعہ جب آپ یہ دس روپیہ آپ دے رہے ہیں تو آپ کر کیا رہے ہیں آپ کو اللہ تبارک تعالیٰ نے آپ کے رزق میں وہ دس روپے جوڑ دیا اور آپ کے دل میں یہ ہدایت دی کہ چل بھائی آج دس روپے دے دے اس آدمی کا کھانا ہو جائے تو ہم میں اگر وہ فطرت پیدا ہو جائے کہ اب ہم ہیں جو اللہ کی یو نو نائنٹی نائن نیمس آف اللہ ون آف دا تھنگس لاسٹ ویری کنکلوژن کہ ایک چیز ہے تھوڑی اگر آپ واقعی انٹرنل اور سب کانشیس پہ دیکھنا چاہتے ہیں تو نائنٹی نائن نیمس آف اللہ دیر ناٹ نیمس وہ اللہ کے نام نہیں ہے وہ اللہ کی صفتیں ہیں اور دے آر یو ہیو ٹو لک ان ٹو اٹ پڑھ لیجیے وہ 
to give you a very small example allah ka ek naam hai khaliq jo paida karne wala hai creator aap aur hum creator nahi ban sakte lekin ishara ashful makhlukat ko banane se ye hai ki you are not the creator but be creative dekhiye creator and creative to humko ye diya kya gaya hai ki be creative and hence maine main sabhi community members se guzarish karta hu is time of need mein aage badhe make your contributions towards the society agar aap paise se ration se nahi kar sakte to kam az kam thodi sympathy batakar thode issues hain logon ko ke problems hai psychologically they need support they need to talk go ahead and do your bit inshallah things will get better right thank you dr asif uh, we have last three questions from irfan arshian zaki if mr khan yeah. wants to know that if you could give some insights on work life balance and dedicating some time to social life i think you just covered but uh... yeah as i said uh, we cannot compartmentalize com- make our life into compartments however we need to make a conscious effort you know work is there we we will we we, we are all bound to work work for a living work to get things done but at the same time you need to start looking at as i said the social needs and that's why i gave the example of the uh, atm of emotion emotional atm once you realize that you do not have enough balance in your atm you have to start working on it and to do that you'll have to set aside some time for that you have to prioritize work is work and a social life you need to take out the time for your family for your friends for yourself which is important hum itne mulavvis ho chuke hain material life mein hum itne mulavvis ho chuke hain duniyadari mein duniya ke kamon mein ki hum apne aap ke liye waqt nahi nikal rahe so give yourself the time it's not too. once you give yourself the time you have the luxury of using the time for uh, pursuits which are unnecessary or for some positive pursuits like be- becoming a better socially accepted person in this community so yes you have to make a concerted effort to start looking at how much time is required to make that atm card really really meaningful and useful thank you thank you dr asid uh, we have a question from ms arshia she has two questions question 1 how to neutralize a stressful situation in a professional environment uh, how to neutralize a stressful situation in a professional environment and a second question is what are some of the key areas of strength you think in area of emotional intelligence this would require complete uh, uh, seminar uh, for a complete uh, an hour or so uh, stress management i mean i do that quite often but you see uh, it it there's not not a simple one sentence uh, answer a uh, stressful situation stress was always there the first and foremost thing i'll just give you a few pointers in a stress situation the first thing you need to do is all of us are under stress in this 21st century everyone is under stress of some kind or the other it's not necessarily work related it could be family related it could be situational so first and foremost thing for management of stress is to find out the stressor what has a uh, a uh, uh, kicked off or started the stress in you there are certain points the points which has started the stress if you can identify what is causing the stress that's the most the key the key what is sticking off this stress so which they are called as stressor stressors so if you can pin point or identify stress what is the source of stress trust me it is easier to get over that stress so uh, as i said it would require a complete uh, 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 program to talk about stress management uh, it's not a big deal but as i said the first thing is once you identify that stressor you will be able to uh, be able to overcome it provided you make a concerted effort and be positive uh in stressful situation what happens is we take certain decisions which we may at a later date uh, regret uh that we have taken such a decision uh, so 
uh, always under stress be calm be composed and try to face the stress in a very positive manner it's easier said than done as i said sometimes if you will take a, a complete class on it and inshallah we'll be able to uh, uh, talk about how to overcome stress but stress is a part integral part of our life and we have to deal with it face on i mean just uh, uh, you you cannot procrastinate that okay time will come and the stress will go away if not you will have to be proactive in managing stress uh trust with a short small time available i could say a few things on that over uh, thank you dr sip we have just last question and i would like to quickly conclude because uh, our we have also our sessions also has come to an end the last question is coming to reinventing ourselves uh, we have the realization of the wrong we have done so we are the the questioner is asking that the person has already identified that they have done wrong and now they mm -hmm. want to make it better but the the other party is still uh, holding on to those past issues and still blaming it over and over again and they are not able to avoid it so how to combat with this guilt trip it happens the guilt you you see once you have you have made an effort sawal ye hai ki you have already made an effort to try to better the relationship but the other part the mistake to you try to rectify the mistake but the other party is not as responsive as you expect them to be allama iqbal ka bahut purana sher hai nashe man pe nashe man is qadar taameer karta ja ke bijli girte girte aap khud bezar ho jaye effort keep keep trying keep trying you cannot change someone you see people are made of different uh, the, the uh, uh, mindsets some people take a bit of a time to come to, that's the reason why i said change to aapne apne aap ko badal liya aapke purane mistakes ko samajh gaye ab aap apne relationships ko behtar karna cha rahe aap approach karte hain aap pehal karte hain lekin aapko ye shikayat rehti hai ki wo samne wala us पैमाने तक आपकी रिस्पॉन्ड नहीं कर रहा इज परफेक्टली ऑल राइट कोशिश करते रहिए ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम डोंट गेट फ्रस्ट्रेटेड डोंट गेट अपसेट फ्रस्ट्रेशन तो आते हैं लेकिन सिंस यू हैव ऑलरेडी सेट एन ऑब्जेक्टिव आपने ऑब्जेक्टिव कर दिया है आपने बना लिया है आपने प्लान किया और उसकी तरफ पहल कर रहे हैं यू टोल मी दैट यू विल बी प्रो एक्टिव यस आप पहल कर रहे हैं अगर सामने वाले जो है वो उत्तर रिस्पॉन्ड नहीं कर रहे हैं तो सब्र कर लीजिए सब्र कर लीजिए डोंट लूज योर पेशेंस अरे वो बहुत ज्यादा अकड़ गया है और बहुत ज्यादा अपने आप का दिमाग वो चल नो डोंट डोंट डू दैट थोड़ा सा सब्र कर लीजिए मैंने कहा कि नशेमन पे नशेमन इस कदर तामीर करता है बिजली भी गिरते गिरते बेजार हो जाएगी यार ये तो शख्स ऐसा है कि अपने घर में तोड़ रही उसका फिर घर बना ले रहा है तो वो भी बाजार होकर कहीं और चली जाएगी तो डोंट लूज होप एंड डू इट और लास्ट में एक बात बता हूं कि जब चेंज की बात हो रही थी तो फिर अल्लाह अकबाल की बात याद आई कि आई न नौ से डरना आई न नौ से डरना नई चीजों से डरना आई न नौ से डरना तरजे को हम पे अड़ना मंजिल यही